In this video, we're going to look at how hydroelectric dams and tidal barrages are used to generate electrical power, and we'll consider the pros and cons of each. The first thing to know is that both of these systems work in basically the same way. There's a big dam that prevents water from flowing like it should, and so we get a much higher water level on one side than the other. The only difference between the two is what causes the difference in water levels. In a normal hydroelectric dam, we're just trapping the water that's come from upstream and preventing it from continuing its journey towards the ocean. If we do this for long enough, we end up accumulating a huge amount of water, which we call a reservoir, which basically looks like a big lake. For tidal barrages though, we're making use of tides which are the cyclic rise and fall of sea levels, due mainly to the effect of the moon's gravity. Twice each day we get a high tide, which is where the level of water in the ocean rises. This also happens in estuaries, which are the points where the rivers meet the ocean. By placing tidal barrages, which are just big dams, in these estuaries, we can trap the water as the tide comes in, so that when the tide goes back out, we're left with a much higher water level on one side of the dam than the other. In both of these cases, it's the difference in water levels that we're using to generate electricity. The difference in heights means that the stored water has a huge amount of gravitational potential energy, which we can convert into electricity. Now, you don't need to know the exact details, but basically, the force of the water that's being released from the reservoirs behind the dams spins the blades of the turbines inside the dams. These turbines are connected to generators that generate electricity as they spin. And finally, after passing through the turbines, the water flows back into the river on the other side of the dam. The last thing we need to cover are the pros and cons of each type. In both cases, we can generate large amounts of energy with no pollution. They're also very reliable sources of electricity. And hydroelectric dams in particular can provide an immediate response to an increased demand. Another benefit of both methods is that the running costs are fairly low, and they can work on both large and small scales. Their main downside is that they often have a big impact on the surrounding environment. Hydroelectric dams in particular often flood huge areas because of their size, and this can end up submerging important habitats, and sometimes even whole villages. Both structures also sometimes stop boats and fish from travelling up or down the river, which can negatively affect fish migrations. Finally, the initial setup of both methods is often expensive. If you haven't heard yet, you can find all of our videos on our website, cognito.org. You'll also find questions, flashcards, exam style questions, and past papers. And we track all of your progress so that you always know what to study next. So sign up for free by clicking here or browse our playlist here on YouTube.